So I'm gonna give you names. Okay. And you tell me whether it's a name off of my Markov chain machine learning generated list of names or if it is an actual Google product. Okay. KitLab Cloud. This is like so hard. <laughs> How are you like, oh no, fake? It is fake. Okay. Good job, good Ooh. job. App invites. That's that's a real yeah, one. Yeah, that's, that's real. a real one. That's an easy one. The messaging functions database, the MFD. Uh, yeah, that's fake. Ah, dang it. Config app indexing. That also is fake, is it not? Dang it. I'm so good at this. <laughs> okay, one more, one okay, more, one, one more. more. Git kit. Git kit? Yep. That can't be real. It is real. What? It's real. No way. Git Kit. Yeah, Git Kit was a, an old name for what became Firebase Authentication. Oh, man, to be a fly on the wall in that meeting. Like, <laughs> yes. Git Kit. Git Kit. It's short for a Google Identity Toolkit. And you got me. I was like, there's no way that's a real product. Woo! I won. <laughs> Congratulations. You know Firebase and Google I'm too well. Expert. Let's take one, Mark. Hey, all you Firebase developers, welcome to Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm your host, Jen Person, developer advocate on the Firebase team. And today for my co-host, I am welcoming back Abe Haskins. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be back. Thanks for coming on. Are you ready to answer some questions? I could not be more ready. Our first question comes from Kieran Patel, who says, is there a way to track Firebase hosting bandwidth usage with more statistics than just total bandwidth? Yep. So that's a great question. And this is a general trend in Firebase, which is that if you're using the Firebase console, you know, you're looking at the charts we have in there, always keep in mind that that data that you're looking at is a simplified view designed to be approachable. We don't want to overwhelm you with a bunch of stats you don't care about. And this is true in cloud storage. It's true in Firestore and real-time database. All of these have some view, some amount of data available but it's not the full story. And as your application grows and as you get into big enterprises and things like that, you need all that granularity. And we expose that just not through the Firebase console, because like I said, we keep it simple, we keep it clean and approachable. Well, where do we expose it then? Well, conveniently, <laughs> if you head over to the Google Cloud console. Which we'll link below. We have a different area called Stackdriver. And Stackdriver and Google Cloud in general, if you're not familiar with it, it feels like a lot of stuff going on. You know, there's a lot of options. You can ignore basically all of that and just go look for Stackdriver logging and Stackdriver monitoring. These are two parts of Stackdriver, which is a huge operational analysis suite. So basically, if you're building this huge application and you want to know everything that's going on in your app, every metric and every you know ping and hit and miss and everything, you could use the Stackdriver suite to do that. But there's a couple areas where Stackdriver looks and connects specifically with Firebase that just exposes a bunch of new data. And it's not something you have to go you know, be advanced about. You don't have to understand really anything. You just have to know where it is, and you get all these great charts and all this great insight into your app. So if you go into Stackdriver monitoring, you'll see that you can go and select resources, and you can say, all right, show me all of the compute resources my project is using. That's great if you're building on Compute Engine, but if you're using Firebase resources, those are in there too. So if you click in that, you'll find Cloud Functions, you'll find Hosting, Real-Time Database Usage, Cloud Firestore Usage, and you get really good granularity on what's happening. In Real-Time Database, for example, you get down to read operation speed, write operation speed. You can see why is my application slowing down? Is it because of the REST API or is it because of something else? And all of this is stuff just not exposed through Firebase, but it's there if you need it. And hosting is in there too, and a bunch of other Firebase products. So if you're getting to that point where you're kind of outgrowing those simpler charts we provide, go check out Stackdriver Monitoring. And I also mentioned Stackdriver Logging, which is a more advanced logging tool. And some of Firebase ties into that. Stackdriver Error Reporting, some ties into that. But a really good place to start is with Stackdriver Monitoring over in the Cloud Console. That's awesome. I'll definitely check it out. Awesome. So our next question comes to us from Mike P, who wants to know, what are Firestore reference fields for, and how do you use them? That's a great question. If you've been using Cloud Firestore since we launched it, you'll notice there's a couple of these types that we say we support as values you can write to Firestore, but we don't explain them that much. The two of those that people talk about are reference fields and geopoints. 
Geopoints are there because it's something we're going to be using more in the future. Reference fields are there, but they're not used that much by developers. Um, they're, they're, they don't provide much value when you're building your application. What they provide value for is actually in the Firebase console UI. And that sounds strange because you know, you're know you interacting with both those parts when you're building your app, but it's actually really important. If you go into the Firebase console and you're setting up your data structure, you're building out your Firestore app, you might think, all right, I'm gonna have a user and they're you know they're gonna be at slash user slash their UID and they might have a reference to a friend somewhere under there. They might have a friend's collection. If you were used to real-time database, you'd think, all right, I'm just gonna put in a string that is that user's unique ID for the friend. And then when I'm on the client, I'll go, I'll rebuild that path and say, all right, slash users, slash their friend ID, and I'll pull out their information. Now, reference fields are like that. They give you a reference to another point in Firestore. But the reason it's better is not because it allows you to do any fancy loading. So for example, if you load that uh, collection, you get back that it's a reference field you don't get back that the actual data of the user. So it's not like a link to there where it's going to magically you know, simplify your queries or anything like that. But if you have it set as a reference type and you go into the console and you look at that field, when you click on it, instead of just modifying the string, you'll actually get a rich editor that allows you to go select another document. So now instead of typing in a string that you'll pull in in your client that's going to be like easy to make a mistake about, you know, it's something that you might reference a document that doesn't exist, when you're editing it in the console, we can build up that nice UI because we know this is just a pointer to another document. And that's the real value of these is it makes it less likely that you're going to have some mistake uh, when you're editing things in the console. And in the future, we might be able to do some cool things, you know, lazy loading, things like that. But right now, that's the real value, is it is just a little less error prone than just storing strings to reference other docs. Nice, that's really good to know. I, I always wondered about that reference field. So <laughs> now I can see that uh, it, it prevents you from, um, you know, messing up and making that a reference to something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm, exactly. And you'll see that as we move forward, we're planning that with other types where we can make that UI better and make it stronger. So it's just less likely that you're going to do those mistakes you could do in RTDB where you you know, click the wrong thing and, you know, delete everything or click the wrong thing and change its type accidentally. Uh, we're, we're trying to really make that UI more powerful than the real-time database one ever could be. Yeah, I already really enjoy that you can, like, type in the path and find, like, a specific location. Because mm -hmm. that was always uh, a pain before having to, like, scroll through uh, the database and be like, oh, what is the, that particular field that I was looking for? And this yeah. allows you to really pinpoint much quicker. Yeah, and we realized we saw people just editing the URL in the navigation bar to do that. And then we're like, maybe oh. we should make this a feature <laughs> because they just ended wow. up. Yeah. that's a good idea. Now, now I feel like. I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you don't have to if you build on Firestore. Nice. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks it's for having great me. Great having you, and I learned so much. Yeah, thank you. It's it's lovely. It's always great to come on. Hopefully, I'll, I'll see you again soon. Yeah, and thank all of you for sending us your questions. And please keep them coming our way. It's the only way we can keep making the show so great. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode. You want to just like have a conversation, and you want to like dive in and answer some questions. Yeah, we can dive in. Hi, I'm Jen Person. This is Abe from the Firebase team. <laughs>